we love math, especially the useless kind. That doesn't mean we dislike applied math or science. It just means that, given the choice between solving practical problems and wandering into delightful, unnecessary ones, we choose wandering. But maybe that divide isn't as big as it seems. After all, is there really a difference between math and science? If you search online, you'll find a story that feels crisp and suspiciously convenient. Science discovers truths by observing the world. Mathematics discover truths by pure thought. Scientists experiment. Mathematicians deduce. Science climbs upward from experience. Math descends from the heavens. It's a charming story, and a damaging one. Because, if you believe it, mathematics becomes impossible. A world where ideas must arrive perfect, polished, airtight. But real mathematics isn't like that. Not for beginners, not for experts. Real mathematics starts in the dark, with experiments, wild guesses, half-formed patterns, mistakes. Just like science, real mathematics is fueled by the simplest question. What happens if I try this? We rarely show this side. We present the marble statue and hide the clay. That illusion, math as pure deduction, makes many feel like they don't belong in it. But if you've been following our geometry series, you already know the truth. Experimental mathematics is not just a warm-up. It's a genuine method of discovery. After all, before theorems, proofs, or definitions, there is something older and more human. Play, exploration, intuition. And intuition is mathematical knowledge. Experimental mathematics, a forgotten tradition. The highest compliment mathematicians give a newcomer is always the same. Intuition. We talk about intuition as if it were magic, a gift. But intuition isn't mysterious at all. Intuition is the knowledge we collect from experimentation. Talented novices are usually the ones who played, who explored beyond the textbook, who tried things, broke things, and weren't afraid to be wrong. Intuition grows wherever experimentation is allowed to grow. If you want to level up in math, develop that elusive intuition. Experiment, draw, guess, play. This approach may look revolutionary, but it is not. We are following the steps of the greatest mathematical minds. Take, for instance, what Paul Halmos once said. Mathematics is not a deductive science. That's a cliché. When you try to prove a theorem, you don't just list the hypotheses and start to reason. What you do is trial and error, experimentation, guesswork. In that respect, you are like a laboratory technician. In other words, Mathematicians experiment too. The laboratory just happens to be made of ideas. Building intuition through experimentation. So what intuition have we built? In the past videos, we played with points, lines, circles. We built triangles, bisected angles, constructed squares and octagons. Nothing flashy just objects on a plane. But these weren't exercises. They were experiments. Each construction nudged us to notice something. How lines behave, how circles encode distance, 
how symmetry shows up everywhere, how patterns repeat, how structure emerges from almost nothing. We never define point or distance, yet we learn to them by using them, the way a child learns left and right by bumping into things. Over time, these impressions accumulated into a quiet geometric vocabulary a language of images and instincts. That language is intuition. And uh, to see how much intuition we've built, let's zoom in on just one example. What a square can teach us. When we tried to construct a square, we didn't begin with definitions followed by theorems and proofs. Instead, we just asked, how do we build this shape from points, lines, and circles? And the construction forced concepts into existence. To make the first corner, we had to bisect a straight line, creating a direction that feels perfectly balanced. This is the geometric idea of perpendicular. We didn't define it. We discovered it. Whether the definition was important or not, we don't know. We simply followed our nose. We had to repeat that construction to produce the third side of our square. And then, we noticed something remarkable. The new line seemed to run alongside the original without ever meeting it. Without knowing it, we were building the intuition behind parallel lines. Why do they feel like they never intersect? Here's the key. A perpendicular from a point gives the shortest distance to a line. Copying that perpendicular direction ensures that every point on the line remains at the same distance from the original line. A line that stays at a constant distance never gets closer and therefore never touches. So from trying to make a square, we uncover two deep ideas. A perpendicular is a direction defined by symmetry. A parallel is a line that stays equidistant. Just like the first geometers, we didn't get those ideas from definitions. We got them from play. Every experiment works this way, revealing ideas without naming them. Your brain absorbs these abstractions effortlessly. So, here is an invitation. Rewatch our nine explorations. Look for the ideas hiding under the surface. What did you discover that we never pointed out? That's the beauty of experimental math. We don't hand you the concepts. You grow them. Many doors open. Standard math often looks like a single path. But real mathematics is a web. Every construction opens new questions. Now that we've built some geometric intuition, we can peek through three doors our explorations have opened for us. These aren't chapters in a textbook. There are questions that become impossible to ignore once you've explored geometry for yourself. When are two shapes the same? If I place one shape on top of another, how do I know they are the same? Do sides matter? Angles, motions, flips, rotations? This is congruence, sameness through movement. How big is a shape? If a shape changes form, does it change its size? What is size? Can geometry build numbers? By copying unit segments, we accidentally started counting. Can we build addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all from geometry? Ancient mathematicians did exactly that. None of these doors is mandatory. They're simply places your intuition wants to go. 
As usual, in the coming videos, we'll explore these questions and others by experimenting, not reciting. In the, the meantime, be bold, peek into these doors or open your own, experiment, and if you discover something, share it with us. Your meditations become part of this larger conversation. Until next time, stay curious, stay playful, and stay mathy.